Hello dear students, good to see you again. Today we are going to start chapter 2 from statistics portion which is on collection of data. Let's take an overview of the topics covered in this chapter. Meaning of collection of data, sources of data, methods of data collection, census, sampling and statistical errors. Before we begin with the chapter, I would like to mention about the playlist class 11 statistics where you can find my previous tutorials. These videos are specially made for you to help you learn and prepare well for examinations. So if you do not want to miss weekly updates, then consider subscribing to my channel. Now let's get started with today's lesson. I want you to visualize this situation. Your teacher wants you to conduct a study on the impact of commercials or ads on the purchases of the students of your class. What is the first thing that you would think of? Yes, in order to conduct this study, you need to collect information. This information is nothing but data and the process of collecting it is called data collection. Data collection refers to the process of gathering data from various sources. It involves systematic collection of information through surveys, interviews, observations, experiments, documents or existing database. Once you've decided to collect data, next step is to find out the source of data. If you decide to interview your friends to collect data, then the collected data will be called primary data. Primary data collection involves the collection of original data directly from the source or through direct interaction with the respondents. This method provides first-hand information collected by the investigators. It is original and more reliable. Now, instead of collecting data yourself, you decide to use data already collected by someone for a similar study. In this case, data collected will be called secondary data. Secondary data collection involves using existing data collected by someone else for another purpose, but made available for others. It refers to secondhand information. It is not collected by the investigator, but obtained from already published or unpublished sources. Now that you know what is primary data, can you think of some of the advantages of using primary data? Primary data are first-hand data. Since you have collected the data yourself, so it is original and more reliable. It is authentic and more accurate. Further, primary data is a source of latest and up-to-date information. Since the data is collected by the investigator, there is a high degree of control over how the data is collected. In order to collect primary data, you have interviewed the respondent one by one. Now, can you think of some of the disadvantages of using primary data? Primary data collection is more expensive and exhaustive. It is time consuming. It is not feasible to collect primary data when your area of study is very large. Further, primary data collection is limited to a specific time, place and number of persons. If the technique of data collection is faulty, then gathered information will be incorrect. Now, what about the collection of secondary data? It is easily accessible, affordable, and less time consuming, but it lacks authenticity and reliability. You might have to deal with data which lacks quality and is out. Further, secondary data allows to perform longitudinal studies. That means studies covering a long period of time. It helps to generate new insight into the existing primary data and arrive at new conclusions. Use of secondary data does not require the knowledge of data collection methods, so anyone can collect it. When we talk of the disadvantages of secondary data, in addition to lacking authenticity, reliability and quality, secondary data is also affected by personal bias of the investigator. Important points of advantages and disadvantages of both Primary and secondary data is provided in the video. You can take screenshots for future reference and quick revision. Thanks for watching. See you in the next video. Till then, take care and bye bye.